Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Streams Post Film Conversation for Kataka. My name is Eric Seiler. I'm a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Kataka, Gar O'Rourke. Gar O'Rourke is an award winning Irish filmmaker living in Dublin. His work spans across documentaries, commercials, music videos, and art films. He has worked with clients such as Netflix, PBS, CBS, and Sony. His debut film, Kalchaka, which you just saw, went on to win many awards and top film festivals. Gar is currently working on a feature film in which we will hear a little bit more about later. Hello, Gar, and welcome. Hey, how are you? I'm doing just great. So good to have you here. Did you get your workout in this morning? <laughs> I didn't get a workout in this morning, but I got a run in yesterday morning. So that's good enough for me this week. Okay, yeah. good enough. So this place in, in, in Kiev in the Ukraine, um, um, I know people know about it, but what led you to want to make a documentary about this park? Well, my brother was living in Kiev uh, several, a few years ago. And it's a city that I don't really know anything about Kiev. Well, back then anyway. And he used to work out my brother in this gym, in this Kachalka gym. And one day he sent back some WhatsApp photos and videos of this gym. And I thought, what is this place? Because it, it just looks so unique immediately. And I thought, I wonder has anybody ever made a film about this place? I did a little bit of research, didn't do a huge amount of research, but I did enough research to realize that no one had really made a film specifically about this gym. So I thought, hey, this could be a perfect uh, location to make a short documentary. And yeah, that's kind of how it came about through my brother. Oh, great. So when you first um, went to um, Kiev to the park, what, what was your impression? Well, when I first went there, it was in wintertime, which was late January. And it was around minus 10 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that is in Fahrenheit, but it was very cold. There was ice and snow everywhere. And I remember the first thing I saw when I walked into the gym was the largest, tallest man I've ever seen in my life. And he had his T-shirt off and there was just steam right coming off his body. He looked like something out of a Viking battle scene. And I thought, yeah, this place definitely lives up to the expectation I had in my head. And uh, it was just full of people working out uh, with their hands, their bare skin on these poles. And it's ice outside and snow and they didn't care at all. So I just thought, you know what, this place is fantastic. It's, uh, it's a very unique place. And it's, it's a place that's loved by the local people. They love to go there and it's, it's a very social place, you know. So my impression was, yeah. It, I need to make a film about this place very quickly, straight away. It's a little bit about me. Did you, uh, people, how did you, uh, how long did it take to talk a little bit about the production process? Yeah, sure. So I, I in, in total, I, I, I was in Kiev three different times. Um, and the first time I went there was just to kind of do some research, you know, meet some characters. The second time I went there, I actually interviewed about 15 different people and I recorded about an hour and a half of interview with all of those 15 people. And all of those interviews were in Russian. So I had hours and hours and hours of Russian interviews to edit. And I managed to get something like 14 hours of of Russian interviews down to about six minutes of dialogue. And then I decided, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna use any of this and we're gonna go back out again and we're just gonna shoot, shoot it from scratch. So that's exactly what we did. So uh, we filmed it over four days in Kiev and we had a relatively small crew. Our crew came from Ireland. So I worked with producer Ken Wardrop and I had a uh, Colm Hogan was our camera operator. And then he works with a guy called Roman who does Steadicam. We had a very small crew. So it was director, producer, camera and Steadicam. And then we had a sound recordist. That person was from Kiev and a fixer. So our crew was very, very small, but we used uh, everybody was able to kind of wear a few different hats and um, 
you know, because we, we made this film on a very small budget that the funding was done through in Ireland, they, uh, they fund the government funds a certain number of films every year, you know, we have like a, a national uh, organization that can, it's like a, a non charity organization that can fund films so we made this film on 20 on a budget of 20,000 euros which was a very small budget to make something like this so we had a tiny crew and we just yeah we made the most of it ultimately from from the people we had and uh like I say we filmed for four days and then the post-production was maybe 12 days of editing and that was it so it was quite a quite a straightforward relatively quick process I see um it, 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 it was quick uh, your approach to um, telling the story, I noticed you had the, uh, a narrator, the person who kind of like took care of the part. Uh, well, what was um, your approach in doing that as opposed to maybe interviewing different subjects to tell a story or um, doing some dramatiz dramatiz dramatizations or so forth? What was your approach to um, telling the story? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, Eric, because what I had done was I'd actually recorded so many interviews with different people who work out at the gym and I had various styles of stories and different places that I could take it and ultimately I had to make a decision and think right I wanted to make a film that was very simple and very minimal and to do that you have to you have to just remove options you just have to kind of strip away things and get to the core and I felt that the narrative backbone of this film was really one person. And this man, even though I don't say it really in the story that much, this man lives at the gym, the main character that we see in the film. He lives there in an almost medieval style house with no lights or anything. And um, so he's the lifeblood, sweat and tears of this place. And I thought, OK, he's going to be a narrative vehicle, if you wish, to take us through this park and he's going to kind of guide us through this place. I wanted to have a very simple narrative because I want the gym to speak for itself. Visually, it's for me, the images say sometimes more than the words can. So I wanted to kind of heighten that aspect more, you know. I see. I just want to remind everyone we're talking to director Kyle Chaka on Gar O'Rourke. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A portal and we'll get to them as time allows. So um, with the film, can you tell us um, the re reaction to the film? You see a lot of films that uh, people say, oh, great film director, you did a great job, but the attention is actually on the film and not on you. So how do you, how do you um, take that in which you've drawn attention to this um, landmark? Well, I, for me, I always think documentary filmmakers are not <laughs> in my experience eric a documentary filmmakers are not like they don't want their name first in front of the film it's the story it's the thing you know the nature of being a documentary filmmaker is you're showing something that's not you it's it's, it's something else of course you have your artistic input into it and your creative vision but it's not about you it's not you know so for me i really I was delighted to see the success of the film. And, you know, um, I, I was really surprised to be honest. I didn't know if anybody was gonna like this movie uh, because it's in Russian, like it's, you know, it's kind of a, it's a foreign language film which can sometimes be tricky with film festivals. I was really surprised. Um, and we were very lucky we got into some really great film festivals and the film has played in every corner of the globe from, New Zealand to Canada to South America to Korea soon, you know, just everywhere. So it's been amazing. Yeah. All right, great. That I'm glad it was well received. I, I could have assumed that it was. Now let's talk a little bit about you. You're an Irish filmmaker, but you went over to uh, Russia, uh, to um, Kiev, I'm sorry, to the Ukraine yeah. to uh, make this uh, uh, a documentary. So how did that play out in Kiev and also in, Ar in Ireland as well too. I'm sure you showed the film in both places. Did what mm -hmm. a going on the Ukraine receptive? Oh, here's an Irish oh, yeah. for our town. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Like, I think, you know, when you go to a different country and you film something there, very often people really love the fact that you have taken a special interest in something that's uniquely theirs, you know? So when we were in Kiev, there was tremendous enthusiasm for this film. 
And from my, I uh, unfortunately, Eric, you know, we had COVID last year. So when the film played in Kiev, thankfully it did play in a cinema uh, at the festival. But when it played there, the whole gym, like half the people who go to the gym, they all went there for the screening. So that was really cool. Um, I was really happy to hear about that. And then in Ireland, I mean, yeah, it's funny. Like, I think when we showed the film in Ireland, Irish audiences were just like, where is this place? <laughs> like, it, it's very, you know, it's, it's kind of strange being an Irish filmmaker and, and making films about Ukrainian things. It's like, the two things are very different, but Irish people, you know, we, we love all things European and Eastern Europe and yeah, people find it very interesting here, you know, which is good. That's, that's good to hear. Now, um, uh, before we wrap up, uh, can you tell me what stood out to you about this um, um, park um, as a filmmaker? I mean, when you got there, you, you saw it was, you know, you heard about it and then when you saw it, is this, what's your last impression, I guess I, I wanna ask you from um, this whole process. What, what do you mean, sorry? More specifically, what was yeah, the question? The lasting impression after going to the park, I'm sure you worked out a little bit and making the film, what's your lasting impression? What's your overall impression of uh, thing? My impression is, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what my lasting impression is. I think I just, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience of making this film and uh, I don't like it's it's not like a real emotional roller coaster of a documentary it's fairly light subject but the thing that I took away from it was the kind of the strong sense of community that this this gym has created for that city and what I loved about the gym most specifically was when you go there you will see film stars working out beside street uh, cleaners you know there is no hierarchy here everybody is on the same playing field and i thought that was really fantastic i thought everybody is connected through the single purpose of having a good workout and there's something quite special about that i think you know oh good good oh, i see we do have one question uh one person wants to know uh what is your favorite piece of equipment in the gym <laughs> Wow, oh man, that's a, that's a great question, whoever answered that. What is my favorite piece of equipment? Oh, there was one piece of equipment and it's actually in the film. And there's a kind of an old guy using it and he's, he's kind of moving back like this, you know? And it's, it's, it's like a bar that's on your back and you move back like this. I just looked at it and I thought, what the hell does that thing even do? You know, like, it just looks so confusing as to like what it was actually doing. <laughs> I think it massages your back and it like works you out at the same time, but it definitely was like a tractor or a combine harvester in a, in a previous life. So, I mean, it, it's hard to pick one, but it, they're all so, they're all so fantastic. They're so creative. Like the, the, the machinery there is so creative. It's, I really think it's a work of art, like the, the way it's designed it's it's it really does require that kind of creative element and on that on that subject all the equipment was designed by two people one person was a mathematician uh engineer and the other guy was a gymnast and they both worked together kind of using their own skill sets to make this equipment together you know so yeah okay well good question i see we have one more question they want to know was well, it they asked they asking two questions um, is there an age requirement and are there any gyms like this, other gyms like this in the world? There's no age requirement. And in fact, I saw babies doing like crunches. I saw like a, a two-year-old baby like doing crunches. I, I, his father was like lifting the kid up, like, you know, trying to get the kid a six pack or something. So yeah, and I saw, 90 guys in like their mid 90s uh doing workouts there so it's that is actually one of the most incredible things about that gym is you will see babies and 90 year olds and like people are you will you'll kind of like question what a, <laughs> how old you can be to work out when you see people there um and then the other what was the other question eric um are there any other gyms like this um that you know of not that I know of. I there there is outdoor gyms across the Soviet Union. Uh, there's nothing on the scale of what they have in Kiev. There's 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 no gyms like it. I don't think. Um, 
Muscle Beach is probably the, the closer thing to it, I would imagine, in America. So you guys take second place or first place, whatever way you want to look at it. But yeah, there's, uh, there's, there isn't that many from, from what I've discovered. Yeah, well, those are good questions. Uh, so um, to those students out there, you might want to own, start your own Kalchaka um, here in the US too. <laughs> Just takes a little creativity. Well, Gar, yeah. such a pleasure speaking with you today. Uh, before I let you go, tell, tell us what's next for you. I know you're working on a feature film. What is that about? Yeah, so I'm working on a feature film which will be based in southern Ukraine in a, near a, a city called Odessa. And this film takes place in what's called a Soviet sanatorium. And a Soviet sanatorium is ultimately like, think of a, a mixture of a hotel spa and a medical institution and you get kind of a Soviet sanatorium. So it's a very unusual kind of quirky place. And the film will be based around characters staying at this Soviet sanatorium along with the staff. The film is ultimately, the subject of the film is healing and the various forms that healing can take shape in. Um, so I'm going out there next month for a week to do some research and yeah, we'll probably film it later this year or early next year. Well, it sounds very interesting. Um, can't wait to see it and we wish you all the best um, with that. Thanks, Eric. Well, well, we'd like to, well, thank you so much, Gar, for joining us today. We appreciate your insight on this film and um, we wish you all the best thank you so much. Thanks, man. All the best. Thanks to everyone in Cleveland. Okay. And I'd like to thank you, our audience, for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the upcoming, well, about the current 45th Cleveland International Film Festival and future film festivals, please visit us at clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>